Hey guys, I'm starting a new series where I go through all the 316s in the New Testament. Matthew 316, Mark 316, Luke has one, John, I you know haven't researched it fully, but I think might have one. So um, we're going to start that. That's going to start now and keep going. So I hope you're excited about it. Let's go do it. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. First of all, why did Jesus want to get baptized? And this is, this is a question that pops up a lot in my tradition, specifically, because uh, we associate getting baptized with, with coming forward and responding to a sermon and uh, or turning 12. Happy birthday, dear sinner. But here Jesus is, three decades into his life, coming to John for baptism. Why? Why is, why is he doing that? Well, and if you're confused, it's fine. John was a little confused too. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, let it be so now. Jesus' initial response um, when conveyed in the Greek uh, it lies somewhere between where the NIV and the NRSV and the ESV, where he says, uh, let it be so. Um, and and, and the, the stricter, harsher sounding um, uh, King James and American Standard, which says, suffer it now. It is proper for us to do this, to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. Now, Jesus gets John's consent for all of this by saying that it is proper to do all this, to fulfill all righteousness. Now, righteousness is one of those words that we throw around in church, like justification and sanctification. We don't really know what they mean fully, but we use them a lot. So justification, sanctification, uh, multi-purpose room. What's the purpose of that room? Oh, you don't even have time. For me to tell you all all that we do in that room. It's okay, I have time. We eat in it. But righteousness is the way things are when God rules or get God getting what God wants. And so when Jesus says we're fulfilling all righteousness by doing this, he means God wants this to happen. So the next good question is, why does God want this to happen? As soon as Jesus was baptized. He went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. It is tempting to get distracted by what the dove represents. The simile is just something that the scriptures use to, um, to kind of point to God because we can't really describe God um, with our own mind. We have to use something and say, well, it was like this. It was like a ruby. It was like an emerald. It was like uh, a dove. And so what they saw was not a dove, but the Spirit of God descending like a dove. And this is always the way that the Old Testament writers and, and, and even some of them in the New Testament, they describe God, not because they can't look directly at him. They've just got to describe it one way or the other. And all this means is that God showed up. Go back and read Ezekiel 1, where God rolls into the river Kabar and see how Ezekiel explains that. It is crazy. His wheels were high and awesome. So the point here is not the dove. It's that God showed up. And when God showed up and descended upon Jesus, God had something to say. And a voice from heaven said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So why did Jesus get baptized? It seems like this whole story has something to do with Jesus' identity. You see, in Jesus' day, people got baptized because they bought in with what that rabbi was teaching. And Jesus certainly wasn't becoming a disciple of John but he was buying into John's message that the Messiah was coming and that people needed to repent for forgiveness and so that they can join the Messiah 
in, in, in the good work that the Messiah had to do. In the, and John believed the Messiah was Jesus. And Jesus shows up and says, I believe that too. And John says, you should be baptizing me. And so Jesus declares himself the Messiah by asking John to baptize him. And John declares Jesus the Messiah by saying, no, 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 that's not the way it's supposed to go. And then God shows up and says, this is my son. Jesus believes it. John believes it. And God declared it. This is all extremely important if you keep reading on into chapter 4, where we find Jesus in the desert being tempted by the devil or the slanderer. He's, he's, has, he hasn't eaten for 40 days, and he's hungry, and, and the devil tells him, you should, you, should make, you should make bread out of these rocks. And he tells him, jump off this building and see if some angels will catch you. But he begins both temptations by saying, if you are the Son of God. Notice how he's picking at the identity of Jesus. God has declared Jesus to be something, and Satan wants to make him question that. And this is extremely important to me because I've never been tempted to, to turn rocks into bread and I've never been tempted to jump off a building so that angels will catch me. But the devil is constantly picking at my identity. When all is said and done, I am who God says I am. I am saved, I am redeemed, I am forgiven, I am loved. And I am all of those things that God says I am because Jesus is who God says he is. The crucified, resurrected, exalted Christ, King, Messiah. Just who Jesus believes himself to be, just who John thought that Jesus was, and just who God declares Jesus to be.